video tutorial on histograms in R part two. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. If you haven't watched part one, you might want to go back and do that because we're going to pick up right where we left off. Okay, so we've already created a histogram and we see how it works in the sense of it's putting points into bins and then just counting them up and seeing how many are there. But the other thing you can do here is actually look and see, uh, I'm just going to call this temp right now, temp one, and see actually what it does. Um, this is kind of interesting because what R does with it is more than just make a picture, which is sort of obvious that, okay, I made a picture. But when I run this and I look at it uh, as a whole, and I can say, well, let's look at temp one. Well, if I look over here in my environment, I immediately see temp one is a list. So if you haven't looked at the video on lists yet, you might want to go back and look at that now. So if I run this, I can, I'm going to move out our console window. If I look at this, it tells me a whole bunch of interesting information. Number one, it tells me the breaks. And this is uh, where this breaks are the endpoints. So here's 250, 300. 350, 400, and so on. So this is where it's creating these buckets or bins to count within. And then the next one is the count. So you can actually extract how many were in each one of those, even if you're working on a massive data set. As long as it has breaks on it and the counts, you can pull out how many were in that particular bin. It also provides you with a density, which is just make sure that this adds up to one if you wanted it to add up to one. Because uh, later when we look at overlaying things on histograms, we're going to want to work with the density and not with the frequency, which are the counts. All right, so here there's the mids. Uh, and these are just the midpoints in the middle of each one of these bins. It tells you what data set it came from. And there's this... Uh, option here that says equal distance is true and that means that each of the bins are equally width apart right so there's 50 between 250 and 300 50 between 350 and 300 50 between 400 and 350 and so on so this is what it just tells us directly and it, it forms a list not just a picture which i find uh, rather interesting because that means not only can I create a picture, but I can use the same function that created the picture to give me other information that I might be able to use later. And, and this is really, really handy to have around. So keep that in mind if, if you ever want to get these counts or want to get the breaks, or you can actually set a breaks as the option in the histogram if you wanted to. We're not going to do that here, but it is an option that you can set. Okay, so the other thing we might want to do real quick in this video, other than seeing that it produces a list, is set some colors. So before we have the histogram, I'm not going to count the points this time, but I'm just going to quickly create a histogram by copying and pasting, and I can add color to this as well. So I can add the color, and let's say I want this to be uh, orange. Don't capitalize it. And let's see if orange is actually a color. And we can run this. And sure enough, I get the picture of the histogram. And it is now orange, which in this case is not a beautiful orange, uh, unless you particularly like this shade of orange. But it does give us the ability to change colors as well. All right, so now we can move on to the next video where we'll learn how to overlay things and interpret these pictures because... The, there's no point in creating a picture if you don't know what it means.